Hello YouTube and welcome to part 5 of judging and grading every fitness channel. If this is the first time that you watch this concept, it's very simple. I'm going to give every single fitness channel a grade out of 20. And to do that, I'm judging them through 20 criteria I selected that I believe give a good overview of the quality of a channel. It's supposed to be as balanced as possible so as not to be influenced by my own taste and preferences, although of course they play a role. But for this series in particular, I try to be as much of a robot as I can, meaning, and this is going to be especially important for this episode, that I have no friends and I also have no enemies. Let's get started with today's first entry, Brian Asbro. Programming 8. Brian is someone who is from a strongman background, but before that he did many things. He was in the military and he had a more general strength-oriented background. He calls himself a, uh, a strength athlete. And therefore the type of advice he gives is more towards that. But it does not mean he's a bad resource for people who want to get big. I believe that compared to some people who call themselves bodybuilders, he gives better, better advice. You will get better muscle gains if you follow the type of programming principles that he espouses. He offers some pretty simple concepts, like giant sets, but you will get to understand that to get big, you don't need to open books and you don't need to, to get complicated. Simple things often give the best results. And therefore, he deserves this high grade. Experience 9. I believe that he's been lifting for at least 20 years. And he's been through many phases. He himself admits that he had portions of time where he wasn't getting much results, but he eventually got to a point where he was competitive at the national level for strongman. Therefore, this is someone that you can actually look at because he made some mistakes and he corrected them. He also is someone who came back from very severe injuries because he's a little bit of a knucklehead. And he also came back from very severe illnesses. And I think that in this case, his mindset and his resilience is extremely, extremely beneficial because if it is a trait that you can espouse yourself, you are going to be the better for it. Since he's also an older gentleman and because he owns a gym and has a plethora of clients, I believe this justifies giving him a very high grade for experience. Integrity 9. Brian is not the type of man to get involved in drama. Actually, if you go back, you will never find him involved in any type of salacious activities on YouTube Fitness. He is just not interested. To me, that's a sign of high integrity. He got big through his own merit. And when he did associate with other channels, it was pretty straightforward. There was never some monkey business in the background. You cannot really point me to anything bad that he did in the past. Everyone likes the guy. I couldn't really give him a 10 because there was never a part where his integrity was challenged and he had to prove himself. He's always been a great dude, so he gets an almost perfect grade. Usefulness 7. You click on Brian's page and you're going to find something that you like. Nowadays, it's a little bit more eclectic. He does some vlogs, some videos in the forest, some bushcraft, which some people might not care about because it's not about fitness. So I had to dock some points, but overall the channel is very useful. And even though, again, he gives strength advice, it's applicable for bodybuilders. You can make use of it if you want to build a good physique because it's very general. And when I judge usefulness, I look at fitness and I think, okay, is this a fitness channel? Is this something that the average person can click on and get immediate results from? And the answer in this case is yes. Again, some points were dug because he sort of lost direction in the past one year, two years. I understand perfectly why. It's because he was sick. Character 9. Great guy. You can tell he's a little bit standoffish. Strikes me as the type of guy who does not, not get along with everyone and who doesn't care. He's not fake. You can tell. Some people you can just tell. And you can tell that Brian is not a character. He's just Brian. All of that energy in him, that golden retriever puppy energy, is for real. It's not a mask, it's not a gimmick, it's not a persona. It's just the way he is on camera because I think it's the way he is in real life. But he also has a dark side, quote unquote, on days where he doesn't feel good. And I think that what is so endearing about his character is that he doesn't try to hide that. 
Many people only want you to see the sunshine and the rainbows and never the rain. Brian shows you the rain, he tells you about the rain and it's a good thing because it rains in your life too and it makes him much more relatable. It's, it, it's just, you just look at him and think, I would like to have a beer with the guy. And in YouTube fitness, that is a den of snakes in reality, it's good to have someone who is just straightforward and a little bit candid even. Dogmatism 4. I say he gives good advice, and that is true, but some of his advice might, might get you no results at all, especially the stuff about isolation, about getting bigger arms, because he has a strongman bias. A strongman will tell you that to get bigger traps, just do strongman carries, do farmer carries. If you want bigger biceps, well, the stretch of the weight is going to give you better biceps, or you can do atlas tones, or you can do some chin-ups. He's very compound oriented, and he himself has admitted to not like isolation. The issue is that this dislike of isolation is not based on anything logical or objective, it's his own preference. That is, dogmatism. Again, fairly normal, people who get to a high level have built systems in their brains and that's how they function, that's how they teach people. Not a bad thing, but it gets him, it gets him a below average grade. Originality 8. I think that if we can pinpoint one guy that we put Strongman on the map as a general fitness practice, it's him. Before him, Strongman was seen as this greedy, bloody sport, only for very big, tough men who are willing to break their spine. And that's not what it is. First and foremost, there are different weight classes in Strongman. You can be 180 and participate in Strongman. And on top of that, it can be fun. Strongman training is extremely fun. The average population has a good time training Strongman. Whereas, if you take them in the gym to do three sets of curls, for, for the majority of people, that's boring as shit. So he's doing proper functional training, and this is new. In my opinion, the way he did it was brand new. And I also believe he opened the door for all of these strong men to have their YouTube channels and to get some visibility. He never gets credit for that. And I almost never hear his name mentioned. He doesn't get credit. He doesn't collab with these big strong men guys. And yet he deserves that because he put strong men on the map. He made it into something relevant for the average person, not just a circus act to look at, but something that you can do as well. And I think that the gym environment that he cultivated in his videos in the golden days of his channel, where you saw all of the people training, you discovered all of the people who were of all ages, of all runs of life, who all did strongman and loved it, had a good time, did a ton for the sport. Black Pill 9. Nine, because he has surmounted so many things in his life, so many obstacles that it would be tough for me to not say that he's highly motivating. Keep in mind, this is a man that got parasites in Africa, puked 50 times a day for years at a time. I don't know about you guys. For me, two days in of puking 15 times a day, I, like I'm running into the highway. I'm not going to go through that. It's, it's a torture. It's an actual torture. Of course, he's a tough guy. He was special ops, I believe. Uh, therefore, it's to, to be expected, but still, his resilience is it's something that I admire personally, and many people admire him for it. He almost died several times. I think he got a bone marrow infection at some point, but he always has a smile on his face. That is a very anti-black pill. On top of that, it's something that many people will notice. He is on drugs, absolutely, but he never talks about it. That is the way to go. Don't ask, don't tell. If you're on drugs, shut your pie hole and do your thing. Is it maybe not honest? Yes, but the lack of transparency is what is needed. When you promote your drug use, you create further addicts. You create people who are going to jump on it. His drug use is his business. He understands that. When people mention it, he doesn't answer, and that is great. It's also why I don't give him a perfect 10 for the black pill. Humor 6.5. If you look at his videos, he has a very uh, straightforward approach to comedy, meaning that he speaks to you directly without a joke, and then it cuts to a black and white or portion segment where he makes the joke. It works. For me, it works. It never gets stale because it's never long enough for you to be like, okay, can we get back to the information? The jokes are silly. It's always almost self-depreciating humor, and coming from such a big guy, a guy who's successful, it's welcome. You know, he appears more humble, more down to earth. It connects, with, it connects with the audience and it tends to be fairly funny. It's not haha -ha funny what you're going to love until you die, but it's still relevant and it makes an effort, so I give a good grade, a decent grade. But as social nine, there is something about Brian's personality that makes it so that people never fanboy for him. Because why would you fanboy for him? He, he never tries to pretend to be something special or above the crowd. He's just a dude who gives advice, he's good-natured. 
he is a sort of the earth man and therefore this type of personality simply doesn't bring fanboyism on the table at all. So excellent great at, uh, at this. He doesn't get a 10 because his channel is too big and the second the channel is above 100k, you still have fanboys for some reason. Empathy 3. Surprising. Why does this guy get, get such a low grade for empathy? Well, it's because the channel is a lot about him. And I understand it's because he had health complications. But this means that the relationship and the emotional pathway is one way. His audience looks up to him, are very invested in his health, but I think that it doesn't really rebound. He has a tough time connecting with people on an interpersonal level. And it didn't used to be the case. He had an easier time with that just when he used to make videos in the gym with other people. But even that was a form of proxy because it wasn't really him connecting. It was the environment and the family that he created. And I don't say that to mean that he has no empathy. I think that in his personal life, he is someone who is highly empathetic. Uh, I think he took care of a kid, and I say kid, the guy is my age, who had cerebral palsy, and he helped him train, and that was greatly influential in the guy's life. And it was great. It was a great message to promote. So I'm not saying that to say that he's a cold-hearted monster. But throughout the camera and with the back and forth with the audience, it's all a bit one-sided. God Complex 7. He's down to earth, sometimes get cocky, but it's the fun type of cocky, you know? And he doesn't take himself too seriously. Still a seven because he knows where he stands. He gives advice straight up and he doesn't really receive objections because, well, it's his channel. He's going to teach things the way he wants to teach things. It's to be expected that when you get to a certain level of relevance, you are going to get an ego going. To him, a seven is still a great grade, so he doesn't have that much of an ego. Production quality seven. His channel is... Uh, is good to look at, I mean, nothing terrible, it's a good quality sound, good quality image, but he never took it to the next level. He doesn't do crazy edits, it's mostly jump cuts. He has some skits in there, but they're not super well worked. It's not with high production value. It, there's no real, you know, disguise, it's just him, because he wants to do something real. I think that this is sort of the point. Is he doesn't want to create a disguise because he wants to show who he is and what he does. But this also means that he never got to the level of these other channels that look professional. For him, sometimes you look at certain angles, you can tell that he just plopped the camera and he recorded. It. it gives a realistic feel to it, but it also docks him some point for that. Science 4. Never re mentioned science. And I think that in this case, it's a little bit of a detriment because if you are in the position where he is of trying to promote strongman, and you're going to pin strongman against other methods of developing a physique and becoming more, more proficient at fitness, using some studies could be useful. Now, four again is not terrible. Usually, when people never talk about science at all, I give them a five. So it's still a bit middle ground. So we'll see that the science grade for this episode in particular is going to be interesting because we're going to dive into how I grade people. Clickbait six. Clickbait 6 because I think that the thumbnails in particular tend to be clickbaity. They, they tend to be uh, very close-up pictures of his muscles, which is great, but it does also count as clickbait. And nowadays, he also has started to enter a more short type of production video, meaning that the videos are very short. And it's a call to action of click the video, the, the, the good method to do this, etc. It's the way to go on YouTube if you want to get relevant, that is what you're supposed to do. But he has a history of that, meaning that his most popular videos tend to be things like this, like the best method for traps or things that will actually grow your arms in opposition with other methods that he believes to be inferior, etc., etc. It's sort of a, a neutral type of clickbait, meaning that I don't think it's harmful, but it's not harmless either. Content Recycling 3. I have noticed that he tends to make the same videos times and times again. And I don't know if it's because he ran out of ideas, but he made like five videos about the bench press that pretty are pretty much summed up by the same ideas. A ton of videos about pull-ups that are the same thing. I understand you're a strength athlete, you have only so much to talk about. It's why I think recently he started to talk more about bushcraft, about other things in his life. So it still gives him some points there and he's going to get better and better as he evolves. But it got a bit stale. And I think that it's horrible to say, but his health updates b managed to also bring some novelty to the channel because it broke the monotony of it all. And monotony of it all. And since nowadays he also doesn't have the gym footage anymore, 
that also tended to be the highlight of the channel and it was a very important part of what kept it going. So, if he ends up watching this video, this is the reason why he has a bad grade for content recycling, something that is very easy to correct. Conciseness 8. The videos are comprised between 5 to 15-ish, 20 minutes, so it's good. Back then, he used to make longer videos, which I appreciate personally, but I understand that most people don't have, quote-unquote, the time, or more like the attention span, to spend 25 minutes watching a video, but that was his bread and butter back in the days. Seniority 6, the channel is old. It actually is very old. I think it's 13 years old, if, if I remember correctly, but he only started making videos where he talks to the camera directly recently. And because he has some large periods of time where he uploads nothing, I cannot really give a good grade for that because, well, lack of activity, lack of frequency doesn't count as work. So it hurts your seniority grade. Supplement 7. Interesting, because anyone who watches Brian knows that he's anti-supplements. For a very long time, he said that supplements did nothing. And I know for a fact that he rejected more than a dozen offers of companies who contacted him to become an ambassador for their brand. So he turned down money, he turned out supplement deals. Why am I giving him a seven? It's because at some point he started to endorse a company. I think it's one form, which is not a bad company, but the second you start making a revenue out of supplements, I have to dock points even if the company is good. Physique 8.5, I'm being lenient here because I'm not going to take into account the physique he had when he was sick, that would be a little bit despicable in my opinion, so I'm trying to get a little bit of a middle ground going. He's a huge dude, Jack, he's getting bigger nowadays. Yes, he's on drugs, but it doesn't count for that grade in particular, it's for the black pill mostly. He has an unbalanced physique because he has super strong points and weak points, but he's a strong man, and I think that most people who look at him think, wow, I wish I could look like that. So it's a good grade still. Brian Alsru, total grade, 138 points. Next up, Jérémy Etier. I'm pronouncing it à la française. Programming 3. His uh, knowledge about programming is clearly lacking and that's because he speaks to people who know nothing about programming. His videos are mostly for novices and therefore he never needs to dwell into advanced programming. Even talking about progressive overload is a revolution because it's people who have never heard of that. But that's like entry-level shit. It's not really his fault. Maybe he knows more about programming, although we'll discuss it later, I, I doubt it. But uh, with what I have to work with, I only see the basics, and the basics give you a bad grade because the basics only get you so far. Also, I review some of his programs and they're horrible. Experience 3. Young guy, he is 28. Not that young in reality, he just looks very young. What I have a problem with in his case is that it looks to me like he hasn't been evolving much. And that is a problem because as a content creator, if you stop being a lifter and you become a YouTuber first and foremost, soon enough you run out of things to say because you base the information you give off of your own experience. Many people make that mistake. Many people prioritize YouTube and they stop putting in the work for their own body. And eventually what happens is that their videos are not that good anymore. They can still get a lot of views, but in terms of raw information, they lack that something, and that something is practice. Practice that then transforms into knowledge. So this is why I have to give a bad grade. In total, I think that what he can give his audience is not that much because he himself hasn't walked far enough to look back and be able to actually tell people how to walk the walk and how to approach obstacles. As you have noticed, experience is mainly based on the tribes and tribulations of the person, trials and tribulations of the person, and all of the things they encountered and they can pass on to others. And credentials also uh, play a, a huge role. Integrity 4. It's hard to find, but if you're a little bit of a weasel like I am, you can find anything. I uh, managed to get in contact and in touch with many people who told me that Jeremy Etius straight up stole some of their videos, stole some of their diet plans, and never gave credit for that. I think it was a drama that occurred two years ago, some people actually pointed it out. That's despicable. If you're going to be on this platform, don't pilfer the content of smaller creators. It has happened to many people. It has happened to me when bigger YouTubers stole some of my content and never gave me credit. Not a good feeling. 
and uh, therefore I have to lock points. On top of that, in his case, he also has an empire built around that. So when you're going to make a lot of money out of the ideas that you take from other people, that's double despicable. And a little bit of lore, because uh, I just alluded to people stealing my ideas, so now you guys are curious. Recently, Affinex straight up stole the concept of this series along with my thumbnails. He went as far as to just copy the way I make my thumbnails, which for all of the people who say, oh, he has, he's a good guy, he has integrity, fucking nonsense. He is just like this guy. They steal content, they don't give credit because they don't care. They know that people are not going to say anything about it. They know that small creators cannot defend themselves from the type of practice. Truly goes to show that being honest and straightforward is a detriment on this platform that is full of snakes. So because Jeremy behaved like a snake, he gets the grade of a snake. Usefulness four. There is going to come to a point for the average lifter where a year in or six months in even, his channel is going to become useless because it's a novelty channel. It's about this new revolutionary thing that in reality is, it's old shit. It's been done before. He just repackages it to make it sound like it's crazy new. It's not, and if you follow that type of advice, at some point you're going to stagnate. So it's not that useful. I still give a four because someone who knows nothing will still get some value. I would even go as far as to say that if you don't lift, you'll get more value from his channel than if you actually do lift. Character seven. Character is disconnected from integrity. That is going to be very relevant for the further episodes because you can be a horrible person, quote unquote, in terms of analytical disposition, like I can look at things you've done in the past and say you don't have integrity and still have high character because character is the mask, it's the face, it's the surface. I don't dive deeper. I look at what the average person sees. And when the average person looks at Jeremy, what they see is boy next door. They see le gendre idéal, as we say in French, the guy that you want your daughter to marry. He's clean, he's smooth, he's well shaved. He's like a, he's like a doll in a sense. He's like that guy who is going to be on the news, who is going to tell you about the weather. There is nothing, there are no asperities, there are no bad things about him. He is a pure angel. Is that true? I don't know. I don't think so, but it doesn't matter. I stole Doc points because he's so perfect that it's, it looks fake. You look at his videos and it clearly is a set with several lights, several cameras, and you know, it gives off that, that fictitious vibe that I find a little bit creepy even. Dogmatism 9. He has ideas. He has been called out in the past by people who said that his ideas about losing fat were nonsense, that his diet advice was nonsense. He never tried to defend himself because he doesn't care. He is just going to keep saying things and if people want to follow them, they'll follow them. That's a good grade for dogmatism. He's not fighting the dogmatic fight. Originality, zero. Zero because he is just repackaging the content of other people. Jeremy Etier is like the wish version of Jeff Nippert. And I think that pretty much everyone knows it. He is just a vacuum that absorbs content everywhere he sees that is popular and he remakes it to get clicks. And it works. It absolutely works. But it's not original. It's, it's a degree of originality that is below zero even. If I could give below zero, I would. But he's lucky there are no negative grades in this series. Black Pearl 6. He never speaks about the black pill and he never discourages people. But I think that he does it indirectly with his content because when you listen to him, you're going to get a certain type of results and you're going to quickly plateau. That can black pill you and you can think, well, it's because of my genetics. No, it's because you take advice from someone who himself never went very far. Look at his physique. I know that it's not popular, but most of the time, people who have plateaued and who are fairly small are going to get people who are also going to be very small. How could it be different they themselves were not enough to get a good physique. Humor three. I don't find the guy funny. I don't think he attempts to be funny. I hope he doesn't attempt to be funny. Again, watching these videos is like watching the weather. It's useful in a sense because you know if it's going to rain tomorrow, but you're not really being entertained. The entertainment factor comes from the fact that it's highly edited. So we're going to get back to that. He's going to get a good grade for that. But for humor, I cannot give that guy more than a three. It's, 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 it's very generous to be honest. Parasocial 3, for some reason, there are people who are emotionally attached to this guy. I don't know how it's possible. It's like getting emotionally attached to a plushie, but even that, a plushie is soft and you cuddle it at night. 
it's like getting emotionally attached to the mannequins that you see in like clothing stores. You know, with, they have jeans on them. It's like if you befriended one of them and if someone said something mean about it or moved it in a way you don't like, you got upset. I don't get the mind of fanboys, but this is why I had to talk points because look at his comments. You have people who say, oh, you, you're the best YouTuber. Really? That is the best YouTuber? Is the bar really that low? People say, oh, you, every, like, you speak about everything that one needs to know to grow muscles. Really? That, that's everything people need to know? Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to stop making videos. We should start telling everyone on YouTube Fitness to stop because apparently Jeremy Etier has it figured out. Empathy 5. He doesn't try to relate to people. I think he just doesn't care about it because it's, it's the me, me, me show. He's the star of the show. He's the center of the universe. He's the sun that uh, illuminates the, the seat, uh, the setting more like, not the seat. Although maybe the seat as well. I mean, who knows? Maybe he has uh, sunshine in his cheeks as well. I'm not privy of that type of information. But uh, he's just getting a middle ground grade for empathy for that reason, because for some reason, again, some people manage to connect with him. Maybe in Wi-Fi, maybe he's secretly a robot. There's a USB port somewhere that I really didn't catch up on. God Complex 9. That's a high grade for God Complex. How is it possible? Well, it's because I think he has understood that for his brain to, for his brain to function, he must not be cocky. Being humble is part of the appeal. I read some articles about him to prepare for this video and uh, I wish I could pour bleach straight into my eyeballs. Some of them called him a humble hunk, a humble hunk. Say that 15 times and see if you can manage humble hunk, humble hunk. Uh, so apparently it functions. Production quality 10, perfect. He has clearly people who work for him, he has an editor, he has people, he have, he has people to make his makeup, I believe. He has people who make lighting for him. It's like a TV set. And the editing is also very high quality. The editing is insane. You're watching someone, someone who has a lot of things in his favor when it comes to editing. You have these graphs on the thing. I mean, I understand why people are mesmerized by the content, even though it's not that high quality. It's because there's, there's so much going on that you just can't help but pay attention. It's like a firework. But... Just because it's a firewall doesn't mean that the application of the information and data on screen is proper. Science 4. Jeremy Etty one day woke up, looked at YouTube and thought, okay, what is popular today? He saw a video by Jeff Nippon and he was like, all right, science. Science is popular. But what is science? I heard that term when I was in fourth grade one time, but I was too busy chewing gum. So I'm not sure. But what I know is that all of these schmucks tend to really like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a ton of studies in my videos. I'm not going to double check or cross reference. I'm just going to say, well, the study said this and I'm going to put science in the title and that will get me popular. And he was right. But that also constitutes prostituting science and I do not like it. So four. Clickbait two. It's uh, like any big channel with millions of subscribers. You have to clickbait. That's how they got this big. And at the end of the day, everyone clickbaits, even the people who struggle to break 10k subs. They clickbait, some people just do it better than others. He has the secret formula videos between 10 to 15 minutes tops, 15 minutes being the best length. Thumbnails that are highly modified, photoshopped. Uh, one thing that I found funny about his thumbnails is that he of course does the old, an arm Photoshop to look skinny on the left and one that is Photoshop to look massive on the right, to be like before and after. For him, uh, most people usually have to Photoshop the arm smaller. He does the opposite. He starts with a skinny arm, that's his arm, and then he has to blow it up, which also constitutes cheating, in my opinion, because it's not the way your arm looks, and that's not the types of results that you got. So what do you know? Why do you put that in your thumbnail? That's the way YouTube works. Clickbait. Content Recycling 6. He is an Ovalti channel, so there's a new topic every day. I have noticed, however, that he is the stereotypical YouTuber in that whenever a video works and the topic of a video works, He's going to redo that video ad nauseum until the cows come home and until the end disappears and is shadowed by the sun. He has six videos about posture. Six. They are all the same video. He posts one a year. It's like a tradition. And the reason why he does that is because these videos are very popular with normies who want a quick fix about posture, even though that doesn't really exist. You have to reinforce your musculature and then do active stature, active standing to be able to correct things. 
but because it works, I'll just keep doing it. That is content recycling. So this is why I adopt so many points, is because you can pinpoint video types that are recurrent on this channel that add nothing to the discussion, it's the same things he says times and times again, but because it works, he will keep doing it. Queen size is 10. It's short, it's edited, there are no dead sciences. Like, look at this, for example. That doesn't exist in Jeremy's videos. That will be cut because you will lose the attention of the goldfish. The goldfish cannot focus throughout five seconds of silence. Are you kidding me? So you have to cut that. But it's a 10. Seniority 5, the channel is very young. I was shocked to see how young the channel was. And it's insane how much he blew up. So he got more points than he, would norm that he normally would for the amount of years that he's been on. Seniority is a bit weird. If I don't know what to say, I give one point per year. And if there are shocking things or things that minus or bonus the grade I modified, in this case, because he had tremendous success, I emptied up a little bit, but it's still a young channel. Supplements eight. Uh, he doesn't sell supplements. Unless I'm blind, and please correct me if I am, I could not find a line of supplements by Jeremy Etier, which is surprising because he could make bank with the millions of sub subscribers he has. I found videos about him reviewing supplements and they were fairly honest. He spoke about whey protein, creatine, things that work, and that's pretty much that. He spoke about caffeine. So I was as surprised as you are right now, but he deserves a good grade for that. An eight. The reason why he did not get the full grade is because he was still associated with certain supplements and therefore I believe he made some money from it, but he doesn't have his own line. And then physique, six, because he looks slightly better than the average person who started lifting a year ago, he's still very small. He's 5'11", 160, 170, I believe, in these waters. That's, that's very small, especially for someone who apparently knows so much, he should be much bigger. Jérémy Etier, total grade, 107 points. Next up, the Bioneer. Programming, 7.5. The Bioneer is a functional channel, and therefore he is skewed towards functional fitness. It's a general type of fitness, so he gets a good grade for that, but people who are more towards physique or strength training will not get as much value from his programming information. On top of that, the way he programs tends to be a little bit scatterbrained. Not that it's bad, it's just that it's his approach. He doesn't have a rigid and structured approach like a bodybuilder would. And while it has its benefits, we're going to get back to that, for some people it can be a bit confusing. Experience, nine. I went through his uh, biography, quote unquote, he is someone who has been lifting for a very long time. Actually, he was in bodybuilding before he started doing what he does nowadays. He even won, that's a funny piece of lore about the Bioneer, a bodybuilding competition when he was 16 on bodybuilding.com. And he therefore had a pretty good physique for someone so young. So that's good information. That things that he can teach people about because he saw both sides. He saw the bodybuilding side, the aesthetic side, and then the functional side. So he can be of good advice here. He also has experience in multiple martial arts and he is also well educated. These things count for experience. He has a master's degree, he studied psychology, he studied exercise science. It makes him a very valuable resource. And on top of that, he lives. He's not just a pondexter and a brain at a desk. He has a good physique, he is agile, he is athletic. So he is the complete man in that regard. He does not get a 10 for experience because he, ne he would need to be slightly older for that. Once he starts getting gray hair, I will give him a 10. Integrity 9. Be my guest. Try to find drama with the Bioneer. You will not find it. I think recently he made a response video from like to some asshole that spoke about functional training. And even the response video was very measured. And it was funny because it's the only response video on his channel. He never name drops. It's all about a self-focused approach to lifting to best benefit the people that watch. And this is how fitness should be. This is why he gets a very high grade for integrity. He doesn't get a 10 again because he was never faced with a situation where he had to prove himself and surpass the odds. So I can't give him a perfect grade for that, but he is that close to it. Usefulness 9. Super high grade. Getting high grade for usefulness is very difficult. But for him, it's because of what he does, right? 
Functional fitness for the most part means that it's accessible. Most of his videos, even if you've never trained before, you will be able to replicate some of the movements you will see. And the concepts are targeted towards people who are sedentary to get them to move. This is the majority of the population. If you have a channel that's for bodybuilders and very advanced, sure it's nice for them, but 90% of people can't make use of the information you give them. In this case, he can. You see videos about hanging from trees, you see videos about doing bodyweight squats. You don't even need equipment to do that. That is immediately useful. Not a 10 because, again, some people who are more advanced are not going to be able to use that advice. Character 9, English chap, well-natured, funny, jamais un mot plus haut que l'autre. For people who speak French, you know what that means. A likable man. And someone who I believe is not faking it. If this is a mask, I'm willing to go eat, like, agis. This thing that the Scottish eat that I don't believe uh, is, uh, is allowed in my country. I think it's banned in my country for some reason. I think that he just is that nice guy. And this is why people love him so much. There is a, a genuine love of his community towards him. He is useful to them, but on top of that, he's a pleasure to follow. Many people give good advice, but they're also assholes, and you can't be on board 100%. For him, you can, because you know you won't get betrayed. This is dangerous, but this is a man that I think you can trust. Dogmatism 4. Functional fitness has its flaws, and one of the flaws is dogmatism. You listen to people like Ido Portal, you listen to some calisthenic athletes who call themselves functional. They think that what they do is the best, and anyone who does anything different is wrong. Pioneer is not like this because of his background in bodybuilding, but he clearly has a hard-on for functional fitness and therefore he sees everything through the scope of functional fitness, which means that the type of advice he gives his audience is skewed by that preference. That, that is called being human. I am a robot, so I dock points for that, but everyone does that for the most part. Or people who don't do that just don't stand for anything. Or they try to be nuanced and if you are too nuanced, you can, you can lose yourself in the nuance. Originality 8. His rage should not be that high for originality because he does nothing new. Functional fitness is old stuff. But what I find incredible about him is how he managed to turn an old dish into a new stew. Meaning that he took YouTube by storm. It was incredible. And it's because the way he approaches functional fitness is different. It's not what it used to be. And I think this is why the name of the pioneer is so fitting for him. It's the next step in the evolution of human movement. And many people see that. And it's not a gimmick. Many people have gimmicks where they present themselves as like hyper advanced in terms of te technology. He has things to back it up. He has the credentials to back it up. But most importantly, the practice and the body. So all of that gives him a high grade for originality, even though he should not be getting a high grade for that. Black Pill 9. This guy is a father. He's a man who has a kid. That's the definition of a father. Thank you very much, MH. And he also runs a business. I think several businesses. Plus a YouTube page. Plus he does some consulting, I think, on the side. Plus, I think, some tech job. That is insane. That is highly anti-Black Pill. For all of the people who say, well, I don't have time. Nonsense. Look at how much he does. He speaks mostly to sedentary people who find excuses. And he allows them to shatter these excuses. And what I like especially about his channel is the fact that he encourages people of all age and mobilities to get in the gym, especially older men who think that it's too late for them. It's never too late to be healthy. It's never too late to move properly. And that is the message of the pioneer. So I give him almost a 10 for that. As you've come to understand, 10s are extremely rare. There needs to be something striking about the person. Humor 7. I think it's funny. It is a bias of the machine that appreciates British humor. I like dry humor. I like l'humour pince sans rire. It's, it's just, I think it's one of the best types of humor because it doesn't take away from the information, right? It's not a, it's not a clown segment where we have to stop for a minute so that the guy can just fart and honk honk. No, it's like, it's within the flow. It's part of the thing. And therefore it flows. It's very interesting. And it gives it gets you a, ch a shock, and then you move on. It's a non try hard type of humor, and that that ranks very high because there's the effort, but there is not the cringe associated. Parasocial three, through no faults of his own, he gets a bad grade for parasocial. 
I have come to understand that the bigger the page, the more of a chance you're going to end up with fanboys, even if you did nothing to earn them. I don't think his personality is particularly conducive to fanboyism and power social relationships, and yet there we are. You have people on his page who look at him as this functional guru, and therefore also think that functional fitness is everything. And if you approach them and you say, hey, you know that functional fitness is like an entry-level thing that, yes, is going to help people get less sedentary, but it's supposed to then move on to something else. Most people will not just do functional stuff. They're going to want to specialize. Human being specializes. In this case, they say no. They just want to remain this. And I think it's because they like the barrier so much, they like his message so much, that they're just comfortable where they are. That can be damaging to dark evolution. Not really his fault, but that's the situation that I witnessed myself. They're also very defensive of him, but that's perfectly normal. It's because he's their god. Empathy 6. Sort of similar as with Brian. He's a good guy, funny, relatable, I believe, because he's an everyday man, quote-unquote. And yet, sometimes I struggle. I struggle to tap into him. I struggle to understand what's going on with him. And I also perceive, and this is just one person in the audience, that he also has a tough time creating that emotional relationship with the audience. Meaning that there is a distance. And I don't think there's something wrong with that. You know, recently, um, I spoke to a teacher who told me that he liked it when teachers were on a pedestal. They were above the classroom. It was an important thing because it allowed him to retain authority and be a better teacher, a better guiding figure. It's all the same that I see here. He needs that distance. And I think it's also because he's cloaked in mystery. I think that many people who work in tech have that air about them because they work on obscure things that are in rather than that obscure, but that give them that, that again, that, that mysterious aura, which also doesn't help in terms of empathy. It's also the type of content that he does that I think creates that. It's the same with Brian. They make straightforward information for the audience, but they, they rarely bring it back to them. It's really about emotions. I think that's, that's the point. Even when he discusses psychology, because he understands psychology, it stays utilitarian. It really doesn't, doesn't really delve into the emotions. So I think now I think that this is a better explanation for why he has a, a, a medium grade for empathy. God Complex 8, down to earth guy. I mean, he knows his stuff, so I docked some points because he is going to be quote unquote arrogant on certain topics, but nothing to say here. Production quality 9. There is a certain, again, te technological appeal to his content. I don't know why, but sometimes when I watch his videos, I feel like I'm in the Matrix, and that's something that I enjoy. And it's not easy to do, right? You need the proper editing softwares. You need the, no the know-how, and he possesses all of that. The reason why he doesn't get a 10 is because sometimes he goes into nature to frolic in the pastures, and he's going to, like, jump in a pond, or he's going to disturb some ducks. And in these cases, the camera angle and the quality is not the best, but of course, it's because it's a wild shot. And it adds an almost pastoral uh, feel to the videos, which I think is welcome. Science 8, he brings up studies. He clearly is someone who reads a ton of studies and who is up to date on the literature, but he doesn't abuse it. You rarely see based on science in his thumbnails or in his titles. He's just going to drop some information based on literature again if he feels he is relevant. He rarely uses this as a way to uh, assert his authority over the audience, and I also appreciate it. I think that this is the proper way to do science on YouTube. Clickbait 6. Now, for 6, again, it's a channel that is well on its way to get a million subscribers. There's going to need to be some clickbait. The clickbait aspect for him is a bit different because it's never the thumbnails. This is why I gave him such a high grade for originality too. He has his own brain of thumbnails. You know, sometimes you have creators who copy other thumbnails because they want the algorithm to like their content. And then you have the rare breed that starts something new. He started something new. You will not be able to show me another creator that has the same style of thumbnails. There is the pioneer way of making a thumbnail. And it tends to be, again, a panorama or a picture of nature or something technological with his watermark it's highly recognizable, it's highly original, but it's not a clickbait. Well, the clickbait is, for the most part, is the titles. Because he appeals to the common denominator with his titles, which is absolutely the way to go. But in a sense, it's, it, it, it's like grabbing functional fitness by the arm and then doing a kimura on it until you, you squeeze every last drop of relevance. It's not a bad thing. If you firmly believe that functional fitness is the way to go, you're going to have to do it to promote your ideology. But I have to dog points. 
Content Recycling 8. So this one puzzled me, I'm going to be honest with you guys, because I could not detect any content recycling. And I know there is some. I know there is some because logically speaking, functional fitness is finite. But the Bioneer has managed to make it look like it's not. Like it's an infinite dimension and universe of possibilities to explore. And because of that, I'm not going to look any further. I'm not going to scratch the paint, as they say in construction. I'm going to leave it as is. I cannot detect the recycling, therefore I believe there is no recycling. And I tried. I tried to find it. I couldn't. He manages to find angles. I think that's the best way I can explain it. Even if he speaks about a topic like an Hindu squat that has been done a million times even by him, he will find a way to pivot it to make it fresh. Conciseness, 8. The videos are in the magic range of 10 to 20 minutes. The one videos above 30 minutes are extremely rare, so therefore it gets a good grade for that. I think that I lowered it because he has a tendency to uh, dilly-dally. Is that even a, a way to say that? Did I just invent that term? To dilly-dally, um, he takes his time, takes a sip of, of tea, is going to include a shot that is not needed, a portion that is not needed. It gives a more realistic feel to it because it's not factitious, it's not artificial, it's not cut, 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 cut but he also loses on conciseness. Seniority 8. So his channel is also old. And just like with many channels that are old, he started with footage of himself where he didn't really talk to the camera. And then eventually he started talking to the camera and he got his big break. So I could give, G give him just a 4 because he's been really active on that type of format for 4 years. But if you look at what he accomplished in those 4 years, it wouldn't be right to just give him a 4 when some other idiots have a channel that has been running for 10 years, they've been making shit for 10 years, and they're going to get a 10, that's not right. So I modified it, I doubled his grade, he gets an 8. Supplements, 6. He does not sell supplements. Again, I couldn't find a, a line of supplements by him. But he did promote new tropics. And I have an issue with that. Because even though they're not technically dangerous, although some of them, like caffeine, can be highly addictive, if you talk about them to an uneducated audience, one that has not put in the work he has put in to own their spirit and their mind, you're essentially selling smart pills, and they're actually called that smart pills, to people who have not done the work to be smart. It's not what he wants to do, of course, he just wants to share what he does, but it can be very dangerous. So I ducked four points. Physique, 7.5, great physique. I want to point out the fact that it hasn't evolved, evolved much. If you go back even four or five years, he sort of looked the same. Functional fitness is not pointed towards aesthetics, so it's perfectly understandable. But physique is the grade of aesthetics. So 7.5 is still really good. He has advanced arms, advanced chest, advanced abs. It's just that the legs are lacking and the upper back is lacking as well. And he doesn't have a level of conditioning that one would deem proper. He's not as lean as he could be which is normal again, he's not in physique. The Bioneer, total grade, 149 points. Next up, Bold Omniman. Programming, 8.5. If you go on this channel, it's relatively new, but a large portion of his content is programming lectures, where he's going to explain to you a concept. These tend to be very lengthy, and he tends to make sure to not take something away that some people would just remove to, to be more concise. He really wants to get the full information. And when it comes to strength in particular, I believe that his information is on point. I didn't give him a perfect 10 because it's almost impossible to get a perfect 10 for programming one. And two, for pure bodybuilding and aesthetics, he might not be as sharp as other people on this platform. But overall, for someone who is getting into lifting, that type of advice can be very beneficial because it really helps with structuring a program. And I think that the structure aspect is where he is the best. Experience 8. He is relatively young. It's tough to give him an age because he has that like face, uh, age, ageless face. He's the type of guy that in 10 years is going to look the same as he does now. But he's fairly young. But he does have some experience, meaning that he coaches people, he's been coaching people for a while. And what I find interesting with him is that he started fat. He used to be a fat kid. And therefore, he didn't start a chad. He didn't start massive and jacked and lean. He had to walk out all of that fat 
And that's good information to give people. On top of it, he broke his back at some point and coming back from a broken, coming back from a broken back injury, then being able to deadlift and squat heavy is good experience to pass on people because many lifters go through that and for some, it's the end of their lifting journey. They will never lift heavy again. He is the proof that you can do that. So it's a good grade for experience. On top of that, of course, he applies all of that with his body. In theory nine, no drama, refuses to name drop. You will not find name drops on his channel. The one thing I could find that is a little bit nitpicky is in one of his thumbnails, he used Bugenhagen. You can consider that a name drop. I don't. The reason why he doesn't get a 10 is because he has yet to have encountered that level of fame that is going to put him against the possibility of making a ton of money from his subscribers. And at this point, he might get a 10 if he resists the urge. Beyond that, he makes money off of his channel, but that's the norm. That's what you're supposed to do, especially if you want to be able to live off of it and make more content for people on a daily basis. So I cannot talk points for that. It wouldn't be right. Usefulness 8.5. It's more of a strength oriented and performance oriented channel, but it's, it's very slight. It's not to the point where someone who is not interested in strength will not get anything from it. If anything, you might get interested in strength by following his advice. He might actually follow you into wanting to become stronger. But it's not the type of manipulation I've seen in the past where powerlifting channels smooth talked, and I would even go as far as to say groomed people into becoming powerlifters even though they did not want to do it. He's clear and transparent about his intentions, and whether we want to believe or follow his advice or not is up to you. That's very useful. I think that people and the type of people that can best benefit from him are skinny lifters who are getting started. There's so much misinformation for these types. He gives straightforward things like bulk, gain weight. Don't try to stay the same weight. It's useless. Don't try to save your six pack, get stronger at compounds. And this is how you program. That is super useful. He doesn't get a perfect grade because people who are advanced for aesthetic and also people who are advanced in other strength sports like strongman, for example, or certain types of powerlifting might not best benefit from his advice. Character seven, there is something about him that I think many people are going to dislike and that's his cockiness. He is very self-assured. It's not a bad thing per se, but it turns some people off. I had to talk some points for that. Beyond that, he's not a shady character. I looked at his past and I couldn't find anything that made me raise an eyebrow. He's extremely transparent with who he is, and it's easy because he is open about his life. We'll see that this is going to be a detail that comes back later. So he gets a decent grade for character. It's just that I know for a fact that he has a polarizing type of personality. Again, not a bad thing. Dogmatism 7. For a strength athlete and someone who is so performance-oriented, he is not that dogmatic. And something interesting on his channel is that he always brings it back to you and your own ability to think. For example, he will tell you that there is no such thing as a dangerous lift, and he is correct. It's all about you, about your disposition, about the way you do the lift. That's very anti-dogmatic. Where he is dogmatic, however, is that if you look at his tier, uh, tier lists, for example, he will absolutely sometimes, quote-unquote, discriminate against certain lifts based on his own preference, like everyone else does. Because if you don't, Every lift is the best lift on earth, and some are bad. He also has a tendency to hype up certain lifts, which is to get people to do them, but it can also lead people to, again, overhype the lifts, even though they're not that good, and that also docks some points for dogmatism. Originality 2. Bold Omniman does nothing new. Uh, it's sometimes videos of him filming himself lifting. That's been done a billion times. Face camp where he talks about programming or about story time or about advice that's been done a million times. He will do tier lists, which is a very consensual and consensual cannot be used like that in English. I have to stop. It makes me look like a creep. It is a very mainstream type of video format on YouTube. So there is nothing new here. It's not a problem because fitness is old stuff, right? It's old stuff revamped times and times again. The interesting parts of his channel are to be found somewhere else because he is simply not a novelty item. Black pill, 10. If I give a 10 for a black pill, it is for a reason. In this case, it's because he's adamant about the fact that there is no natural limit. He's adamant about the fact that all of that fear mongering on YouTube is just limiting you. He is 
always happily calling out people who he deems giga brain, meaning that they try to make up crazy complex theories about how to train when deep down it's very simple and they get, they get people stuck. They get people to never see their actual potential with all of that nonsense. He completely wipes that aside and he opens up the eyes of people so that they can focus on what is truly important. That is highly anti-black pill, that is a perfect score. Humor 4, he, I don't know why he does it, maybe it's part of his master plan to attract zoomers. He loves memes, he has a, a deep love for memes, and he has a deep love for, for jokes derived from memes, which I believe to be the lowest form of humor possible. I'm smirking right now because it's the type of thing that it's so bad and it's so cheesy that it makes you smile. And I think he likes it and I think his audience like it. They have a ton of private jokes going. It's a very tight-knit community. It's just that from an outside perspective, as an AI, it's not funny. It's not funny, guys, but they think it's funny and that really all that matters. I still give him a four. Parasocial five. This one is interesting because if you look at his channel, if you dive into his Instagram, the normal grade he would receive nowadays would be a zero. Like I should give him a zero for parasocial because he's clearly starting to build a cult of personality around him. His subscribers love him. They call him Chad. Look at the comments. The comments are extremely parasocial, tons of fanboyism. He's the best thing on earth. So if you enter at first glance, you look at the community, you think, okay, this is bad. This is going to end with the guy as a demigod with a ton of people who worship him. But then you look under the surface and you start to understand the motivation behind it. The reason why he does that is not to be worshipped. He does that to motivate men to become the best versions of themselves. When he calls himself a Chad, it's because he believes that you can become a Chad as well. So that is five points right there. I cannot give him a zero. The reason why it's still not higher is because it's dangerous. Intention does not call it consequences. Even if you attempt this, and many have in the past, you will still potentially end up with a bunch of people who have not understood the joke, they have not understood the assignment, and they are still going to be fine boys, they are still going to live through him. That is dangerous, that is something that he must keep in mind if he wants to keep going down that path. Or he can ignore me because at the end of the day, I'm just a robot. Empathy 9.5. The community is tightened for a reason. It's because the people that it is, that it is circling, the people that the, the man that is at the core of the community, which is why the power social was so high, is someone who has a strong ability to connect to people. I don't know if it's because of the way he grew up, the things he went through in life, but he, he has a strong big brother vibe. You listen to him talk and it's like he's here. He's on the bench with you and he's speaking heart to heart. And on top of that, he's extremely honest. He doesn't mind telling you things you won't like to hear. He doesn't care. If he thinks you need to hear it, he will say it. And this is the type of dude that I think every man needs to have in their life as a friend. Because he's going to guide you. He's not going to lead you astray. He's not going to be a hypocrite. So that's very high for empathy. God Complex 4. As I said, he has a grandiose personality. It's part of the gimmick. If you can call that a gimmick. I'm not sure if it's like this in real life. I doubt it. But he's going down the Bugenhagen route in more ways than one. And this is one of them where to be able to have that chaddy energy, you have to behave like a chad. And to behave like a chad, you have to distantiate yourself. And therefore, you have to stand above the, above the crowd. So that's a four. It's below average. Production quality six. Uh, it's not bad, but it's not, it's not mind shattering. I mean, the quality of the camera is... is Nah, it's mediocre. The quality of the sound is not that great. Sometimes you records and you can hear circulation in the back, like a truck or something like this. Sometimes you records on the bozu ball in the gym. I mean, it's not the best settings, I would say, but it makes it more real, of course. It's not uh, désaffecté, as we say in French. Like, it's not bleached. It's not cleaned of any germs. You're, at your st you're going to still catch an STD or two if you watch him, but it's going to be the good type of STD. You know what I mean? Can you tell it's getting late and my allegories are getting weirder and weirder with times? We're getting there, don't worry about that. So I'm sure that this production quality can improve with times. I've seen uh, in the past 15 videos a large improvement, especially in the way he edits. The editing is becoming much better. Science 9. Science 9, both Omni-Man, 9, the guy who calls people who cite studies uh, 
what does he call them? Uh, sausage heads, Sammy sausage heads. I think he has a different name for the ones that are scientific, the Optimo Bros. It's again one of these memes that I cannot help but look at, even though they're not funny. But in this case, it's, uh, it's bad to look at the appearances. Don't just stop at the guy who's bald and who's a chad with a, a growing moustache and who's jacked. That's just, that's just a trap. That's just to, to not... It's something that is going to make you not pay attention to what is truly important, and that is the knowledge of this man. He's very knowledgeable. He knows his shit, especially in terms of biomechanics. I would say on YouTube, top five. Right? All of these idiot biomechanics gurus have nothing on him. Nothing. He understands the way the human body moves, and he understands that the human body, are you ready for this one, was made to move. And therefore, the type of advice, of scientific advice he will give you is going to be based on practice and on you. What can you do to best move? What can you do to not get injured, to get jacked with movements that are apparently are going to destroy your spine or shatter your shoulders? He proves all of that is nonsense. And on top of that, he does it without a study. And I like it. I like it that he doesn't feel the need to cite studies to be able to assert what he believes. That's part of the chat personality. Clickbait 8, it's high because I don't see an attempt or a willingness to use thumbnails that are clickbait. It's either him in the thumbnail or it's a, a picture of a manga or a paper of a manga. It's also why he got a 2 for originality, by the way. His thumbnails are all the same and his titles tend to be all the same about the same topics. So now you understand better why the grade is so low. But for clickbait, it's fairly decent. He has some clickbait titles, but they tend to be called to calls to action. And I think that's the least damageable types of clickbait. On top of that, again, no drama, doesn't name drop people. It would be disingenuous to give him less than an 8. Especially since his growth was spectacular, right? When someone grows so fast on YouTube without clickbaiting, it must be rewarded. Content recycling 7. 7 is a low grade for someone who has such a young channel. And this is for the reason I just told you. It looks like it's the same times and times again. With the Bioneer, it looks fresh even though it might not be. With him, it looks old even though it might not be. And that is something he needs to focus on because with time, the grade is going to get lower and lower and lower. Conciseness, 9. He made a ton of shorts when he got started. That ups the grade for, for conciseness. And beyond some broad talks, the videos are between 10 to 15 minutes. The tier lists are longer, but because they're edited, it's not that bad. So I only took off one point. Seniority 4. It's a baby channel. The channel is brand new. And that's exciting, by the way, because many great things are ahead. In one year, you're going to have so much content from the guy because he's also very productive. And I hope he keeps staying productive because he has a lot to offer. But I, I cannot give him more than a 4 because he's just getting started. Supplements 10. I've never heard him talk about supplements, which in my word is a perfect grade. Because don't talk about it. It's useless. Just work hard and get jacked. And speaking about getting jacked, physique, 8.5, uh, he is jacked. He is lean, he has some very developed muscle groups, and I think he has the type of physique that many young men want, and therefore, high grade for that. Bold Omni-Man, total grade, 144 points. And last but not least, Renaissance Periodization which I'm going to refer to as Mike, because he is the representant for the channel and for the brand, and also Renaissance Periodization. I have to say in French, it's un unpronounceable in English, and on top of that, it is too long, and I'm getting tired. Programming 10. I said that it's almost impossible to get a 10 for programming, but they did it, and that is because, one, all of the things they share about programming tend to be fairly solid, even though some ideological details can be discussed. And on top of that, it's lengthy. You can find hour-long lectures from Mike, who explains how to train, how to program your training. It, you will see, is in discrepancy with other aspects of the channel. But with the raw information, because here I'm not judging whether or not I agree with what he says, but whether if it is quality, I have to give a perfect 10. I also really like the fact that he does not try to prostitute programming. Some people take some small aspects of programming and they try to bank from it. They try to run a gimmick from it. He doesn't. He's going to sit there for 50 minutes and if you're not happy, you can go fuck yourself. That is highly appreciable. I think it's also because he is the type of man that refuses to bow down to the common denominator in a sense. So he refuses to simplify concepts 
when he knows for a fact that you have the ability to understand said concepts. Experience 10. Mike has a PhD in a relevant field for exercise, which is not common. On top of that, he is also, or at least was, a teacher at Temple University. He gave courses in very relevant uh, domains, like for example, behavioral psychology and nutrition, which I find extremely interesting because many people who talk about nutrition nowadays only talk about the physical aspect and not the spiritual, so that is rare. And overall, his credentials are amazing. He also worked for the Olympic team of the United States of America. Usually when you're being hired by the US for the Olympic teams, it means that you know what you're talking about. On top of that, he's been lifting for a very long year. I'm not judging the results he got. I'm judging whether or not he put in the years and he put in the hours in academia and he did both. So that is a perfect grade for experience. On top of that, of course, he coaches people. He has a wide net and network of connections of people who also train. So it's only right. Integrity, uh, integrity 9. So 9 because... Usually in that sphere of YouTube fitness, you will always be able to find skeletons about the guys. And I couldn't find skeletons about Mike, which is strange because he's Russian. I should be able to find people he killed or he worked for the KGB or he has something to do with the invasion of Ukraine. I couldn't. And I'm a fairly good detective. So maybe if you have dirt on the guy, go at it. But uh, most of the time, people who don't like him like him for weird reasons. I know that the brain lights of YouTube fitness, as I love to call them, don't like him because he promotes programming and they like to go with the flow and go with the instinct, bro. I mean, we need programming. For natural lifters, it's the most important thing. He might not be natural, but he preaches programming. So he gets a good grade for that. And for integrity, he also gets a good grade. He did get into some minor scuffles with uh, Lyle McDonald, also with Greg Doucette. But I mean, if you have a pulse and you have... A lot of subscribers, you're going to get in arguments with Greg Doucette, it's unavoidable. It's like your neighbor that has a chihuahua, you walk across the lawn, the chihuahua barks at you. Is it really your fault? I don't think so. So I couldn't read dot points. I tried. Couldn't dot points. Nine. Usefulness eight. I have some things to say about the usefulness of the channel. One thing that is for certain is that it's it's very um, it's it's very diverse, right? Tons of things about nutrition that you never hear from other people. Things about exercise science. Things about exercise selection. All of this is diverse, as I said, and it's useful because on the front page of his channel, of Renaissance Parlisation's channel, which is technically his, you will find something to like. You will find something to click on, and that's not always the case. Why I dog point is because he makes so much content that I would expect the playlist to be better organized and also to be kept up to date, and they're not. And on top of that... There are hidden videos in the playlist and it throws the entire lecture, as we say in French, the, the, the programming device that allows the playlist to function properly, to actually work. So if someone from RP sees this, fix your playlist. Thank you. Character 6. Mike is smug. I think if there is one word to describe the guy, he is smug. But I don't dislike it. You see, I think arrogance is justified when you are worth shit, when you are accomplishing things or where you have some information and knowledge. For example, Yushan Bolt is super arrogant, but he's also the fastest man on the planet. And therefore, he deserves to be arrogant. Mike deserves to be smug. Does it not mean that people want to throw pies at his face? Of course it doesn't, but I cannot give him a lower grade than that. He is still ambivalent in the sense that he's highly polarizing. Many people are going to dislike him on site. Many people are going to love him. It's with him, it's really that. It's love him or hate him. I'm a robot. I'm an AI. So I'm in the middle. And therefore, I give a grade in the middle. Dogmatism 3. I heard recently from someone that intelligent people tend to construct systems in their brains to perceive the world and are unable afterwards to see the world outside of these systems. I think that describes Mike perfectly. It's a flow of intelligence because you become rigid and it's exactly what he is. He is rigid. He has what he believes works and that's what works. He will not receive other arguments. You see that in the way he debates. And actually, there's an old video of him and I'm going to quote it. Maybe I'm going to be wrong. Or the title is Argue to Convince. And I think that if this is not the best summary of the way Mike approaches life, I don't know what is. He is going to debate or engage in an intellectual discussion, not to reach a higher, th higher truth. This is not a Socratic seminar. He is doing that to prove that he's right 
and then to assess what he says as right, as a universal truth to push onto people and get them to his spouse. If he gives good advice, it's good. If he gives bad advice, it's bad. But it's still low on dogmatism. Originality 7. You look at Bolt Omni Man and he got a shit great for originality. And then you look at Mike and you say, well, he doesn't do anything new either. I mean, he talks about nutrition, about exercise selection. That has been done. Yes, it has. But Mike does it better. Mike, whenever he takes a concept that has been done a million times, when he redoes it, it's, it's not necessarily even fresh. You know it's been done. But it's so high quality that it's impossible to give a bad grade. And on top of that, because he does so many things and he's good at all of these things, he's like, you know, uh, I'm sure that people who have read uh, sports manga know what I'm talking about. When you look at the stats of a player, you know, there's, it's supposed to be a circle with like strength, agility, de dexterity, etc. And of course, usually it's pointed towards one side where the guy is the strongest and then some areas are shit. No one is a circle. I think that Mike is a circle in more ways than one. And now I just summoned the uh, Greg Lucet spirit, I guess, because he calls people circles. So this is why I gave a high grade for originality. Black Pearl 3. Uh, this is, I think, the worst grade with dogmatism. Uh, actually, no, I lied. There's an even worse one afterwards, and it's going to make a lot of sense. The reason why I gave a 3 for Black Pearl is because he's enhanced. He hangs with enhanced people, and that's most of what he showcases. The majority of the people on his channel are natural lifters. And sure, people will say, well... He trains this way, but he says to not do it, and at the end of the day, he's open about being on drugs. Yes, but that doesn't change the fact that the influence that he has on others is still toxic. When you watch his little friends train, the way they train is poor, because they're not natural, it's not for natural lifters. And on top of that, it has an impact on the way you perceive training. And when a noob is influenced by that and to that type of environment, it is dangerous. Mike has done something, as I said, with the originality that's interesting. He took some concepts from other people. He took, for example, the concept by super training of having that gym environment with a bunch of bros that work out together. And sure, it's great to follow, but then you look at what's underneath the surface. What are the bros? The bros are on drugs. And then you look at what the bros were before they were on drugs. They were not that big. This is a huge problem. There are some transformation videos on the channel that are supposed to be inspiring, but then you look at the thumbnail and the history of the lift during the thumbnail, it was before drugs and after drugs. What message does it give to people? That if you want to get bigger and have a good physique, you have to jump on drugs. As much as Mike and other people can say, well, it's your choice and we don't encourage people with their actions and the type of content they make, they absolutely do because they black pill people. And when you have an audience that comes from Reddit, aka the smallest place on earth, which I personally call Reddit, where well, the small things are, because I believe that's where they reside, and you have a ton of noobs because of the algorithm being recommended to them, you have a responsibility in that, and this is something that I think deserves a three for the black pill. Humor seven. He has a dry type of humor. It's a little bit corny. It's, it's most of the time sex jokes. It's like a, it's the equivalent of poop jokes, but it's, it's sort of walking for some reason. Again, I find myself chuckling and thinking, why did I just laugh at this? You know, you feel almost ashamed of being touched by that type of humor. No, normally, I would actually dock points for that, but I think that he and his crew are unwillingly funny. Some of the, some of the things they say make me laugh. Like, uh, there's this Charlton Banks guy, this Asian dude. I think the guy is, is hilarious. People in the comments always say that Mike is like the super funny guy and he should be a, a stand-up comedian. I mean, beyond the fact he looks like Louis C.K., I don't understand why he should be a stand-up comic. Charlton Banks should be one because the guy is, is piss on yourself funny. I also liked when they run on the floor, like they're dying. I think that's, I think that's funny. It might just be me, me, me having a fucked up sense of humor, but this is why they get a good grade for humor. Parasocial 2, because, and you can quote me on this, right now, in 2022, the worst fanboys on YouTube fitness are... RP's fanboys. Mike fanboys are on other level. It is insane. And the worst part is that some fanboys, like Greg Busset's fanboys, Afnex fanboys, deep down they know they're stupid. Like deep down they know it. So they're not that annoying. Mike's fanboys think they're smart. And they think that they're smart because he is smart. It's like he's the genius. You know, it's uh, X-Men, the bald guy in X-Men who looks like Mike a little bit. And there's this machine where other mutants can connect to his conscience. It's all like this, or they think that because he is apparently a genius, 
it gives them IQ points. It doesn't work like that. Even if, if he is superly intelligent, which I don't care about, it doesn't mean anything to you. Can you understand the concept he, spe he speaks about? Can you make use of it? If not, you're just joking off to a guy smarter than you. What is the point there? I mean, I have a bone to pick with these idiots because I think that they are highly representative of a type of person on YouTube. And that is the, the Reddit crowd. You know, it's the, the analytical crowd, it's the science crowd, which I think is brought by the fact that Mike has a personality that attracts the types of people. And if you want to be able to distinguish between a normal human and a Mike fanboy, it's very easy. Look at the way they refer to him. If they call him Dr. Mike, unprompted, they're fanboys. Like, is there a gun to your head? Is there someone forcing you to call him doctor? Why do you call him doctor? I see so many people do it. Call him Mike. Stop with the honorifics. He's not a saint, he's just a guy. He has a PhD. It's ridiculous when people with non-medical related PhDs want to be called doctor. Okay, he has knowledge about nutrition. Is he going to save my life with chicken? Is he going to cure cancer with protein? I don't think so. So just stop with the doctor, for the love of God. Empathy 7.5. The reason why he has fanboys is because he connects with people. He's relatable. And uh, people think they're friends with him. And that's high empathy on top of that. He has this fucked up ability that even when he speaks about things that are not relevant or related to people like drugs, it feels like he's talking to you about your dog. And you're sitting there like, hmm, interesting. How did you do that? Did you get into my brain? Did you manipulate my neurons and my emotional pathways to be able to do this? I think it's something worth looking into. Uh, he might actually be running a psy -hop. Remember, he's a Russian. Never trust Russians. I know I have Russian subscribers right now. You know I'm kidding. Um, domoi? I think domoi is an insult. It's like, go home. I'm going to stop there. Some damage control. God Complex 4. God Complex 4 because he is who he is. I mean, he's, he's a cocky bastard. He's a smug bastard. It's something that cannot be argued against. It's part of the personality. It's also because he is the face of RP. And RP is a massive company that represents a ton of people. He cannot, he cannot allow himself to, to be modest. I would even go as far as to say that if he attempted to be humble and modest, his fanboys and subscribers would, would hate it. They love the fact that he's so high and mighty. So at this point, it's part of him. And you see that in debates as well. Again, he does not debate to reach a higher truth. He debates to prove to you he's smarter than you and that you're an idiot. Production quality, 9.5. Not perfect because there are still some footage in the gym that are not the highest quality, but it's still very good. I mean, it's, it's top quality editing, top quality sound. Even when he's just at a table, you can see every pore on his face. It's, it's great. For people who want to jerk off to his videos, I mean, it's, it's, it's HD, like on Pornhub. Science 9. Uh, I think that if I give less than 8 to Mike, uh, people are going to burst into my house and set it on fire and eat my dog. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, I don't have a choice. I'm being held hostage. No, just kidding. Science 9 because he deserves a 9. I think that he is one of the people on this platform that actually make good use of science. He doesn't prostitute science. It's not science, science, science in the thumbnails, in the titles. It's not based on science. He's just going to include studies when it's going to be relevant. He analyzes data. Now, does he make use of data to push his other agendas? Of course, everyone does. But he doesn't misrepresent things, and I think that is the most important. And also, he makes idiots seethe, and I love that. Clickbait 8. Very good grade for clickbait. And this is because he does so many things that he has to be descriptive. He has to make sure people know what they're clicking on, because most of the thumbnails, it's him. It's his mug with like a, a graphic something on the side, but his face is 70% of it. And therefore, of course, the titles cannot be just pure clickbait. So, good grade. He still does some clickbait. The reason why I give such a good grade for that also is because massive channels clickbait more than others with more professionalism, and RP doesn't do that as much. So, comparatively, they get a better grade. Content Recycling 9. It's interesting to see that they can upload with such frequency and never have something that is redundant. Or if it is redundant, it's well eaten, meaning that the, the scheduling and the, the, the uploading schedule is extremely well thought out. So it's new content, it's fresh, fresh content. I'm certain that they have lists of ideas that they go through and this explains why they get such a good grade. 
Concisedness 8, the videos are always comprised within, again, 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes 20. Mike tends to be a little bit lengthier in his approaches, even with lectures, he tends to ramble a bit. But that's part of the charm, it's because, well, he's a teacher. Teachers ramble. So they get only 8. Seniority 9, that makes no sense, because the channel is young. If you start looking at old videos from Mike, he starts making appearances as the representative of RP three years ago. That's nothing, but it would be disingenuous to give him a three. He's been making videos for much longer than that. There are lectures from him from 10 years ago on the internet when he used to have air, which is it's an interesting site. And therefore, they get a very good grade. On top of that, in three years, they blew up. They collabed with a ton of people, and I think that overall they did a good job. I don't think that they, have a, they had a negative impact on YouTube Fitness. I think that they had a positive impact because they served as promoters of programming, and also they served as a shield against all of the nonsense promoted by pro bodybuilders. Mike is a pro bodybuilder. He still promotes nonsense, but much less than the other guys. Right? He, he is the zookeeper that is putting the monkeys in their cage. Supplements 10. They don't sell supplements. Mike, my friend, you want to make money? You want to make rubbles? Sell supplements, the fuck? With all of the fanboys that you have, one post on Reddit to make a million dollars. But they don't do it, and that's highly respectable. Or maybe I'm deluded and they do, but most of what I find about supplements and RP is then talking about weight, talking about creatine, saying this supplement is good, this one is bad, they don't try to push anything. They're videos, like 30 minute videos about hydration and supplements on the channel, all of that deserves a perfect grade. I think it's the only big channel that got a perfect grade for supplements. Of course, Mike takes a different type of supplements. So maybe I should have, I should have docked points because he does promote orals, but technically these are not supplements. So that's why they got a bad grade for the black pill. This is where the points went. Because you don't fucking promote orals to people who follow you, especially when teenagers watch you. And then physique, 9. 9 is generous because I'm not the one judging. The machine is the one judging. Mike has that branch warren physique going on. He's very stocky. He looks like a fridge. He has king goblin genetics, quote-unquote. Not the most aesthetic, not the most flow. Something that I personally really don't like. But overall, he's big, he's vascular, he's lean. If I give less than a 9, it's, again, a little bit disingenuous. Renaissance. Periodization, total grade, 148 points. And that is going to conclude today's episode. I hope you had a good time. I certainly did. We are going to see each other again for episode 6. At some point, if you have channels you want to see me review, let me know. And have a good night.